Hello and welcome to the sixth lecture of this deep learning course. Today our topic is optimization. We've already discussed the most basic form of optimization, which is gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. And today we're going to get to know some of the variants of these optimizers that are useful in the context of optimizing and training deep neural networks. This lecture is structured into four units. In the first unit, we're going to be talking about challenges that are often arising during optimization. In the second unit, which is the core unit of this lecture, we're going to discuss optimization algorithms that go beyond simple gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent. In the third unit, we're going to discuss several common optimization strategies that are techniques that are useful in the context of optimization in order to get better performing models. And finally, what is also very important in deep learning is that many things can go wrong. And so it's important to have efficient strategies for debugging the deep learning models that we develop. So let's get started with the optimization uh, challenges. Here on the left, we can see the standard formulation for gradient descent, where we have some parameters that we want to optimize. We have a loss function of which we are able to compute the gradients for at a particular parameter point w. And I'm using this upper script t for time or iteration, which is the progress of optimization over time. That is, we start at a particular initial value for these parameters w, which I call w init. They can be initialized to zero, but that, as we've seen already, is not a very good initialization for deep learning. So a initialization based on a zero standard Gaussian is a better choice, for instance. But here, in the context of optimization, this optimization class, we were going to um, talk uh, more frequently about uh, or discuss the algorithms in the context of very simple low dimensional optimization problems. And for those, the initialization is uh, uh, less critical, it doesn't need to be um, random. Okay, so we initialize at w init and then we update with this update equation, which updates the weights. So with next weight, we get by the old weight minus some step size times uh, the gradient of the objective function or loss function. Now, why do we need to move into the negative direction of the gradient? Um, this is easy to illustrate here on this example. This is a one dimensional example. So W is one dimensional in this case. And we have this blue objective function. We want to find this minimum or because it's a non-convex function, we might actually only find a local minimum if we follow the gradient. So we start at w0 and then we can already see that um, in order to go to move right and we have to move right to reach a, a smaller point, we have to follow um, the negative gradient. Right? So the gradient in this case here is negative. So in order to move into positive direction, we need to move into negative gradient direction because the, the gradient in this example is negative. Okay, so the step size is always a, a positive value. Right. As already mentioned, um, in deep neural networks, the loss is almost always not convex. That means it has multiple local minima. There is not uh, a line that connects any two points and the curve is always below that line, which is the definition of convexity. But this is not the case here. We have points where we slope upwards to the left and we slope upwards to the right. And we have multiple of these points. Right? So there exist multiple local minima. These are called local minima because uh, some of them are not global minima. This is the global minima. Let's assume this objective function is only defined in that range, then this would be the global minimum. But there is two other local minima here. Um, and depending on where we start our gradient descent, uh, 
we might end up in, in those. So starting, for instance, from this point here, following the gradient, as we come closer to the local minimum, we get slower and slower, and then we reach the local minimum and the gradient is zero, and we should ideally stop there. Okay. Um, now, is it a problem if we have multiple local minima? From an optimization perspective, that is not ideal, right? Because we might end up here while actually we're looking for a point here, which drives the loss function even smaller. Um, now, in neural networks, one fact about neural networks is that many local minima are actually equally good. You can see this, for instance, by taking a multi-layer perceptron and within any hidden layer, you randomly permute the neurons and also the incoming and outgoing connections. And then you will get exactly the same result. You will get exactly the same loss function value, despite having used a, effectively a different parametrization. So many local minima in deep networks are equally good, and that's the good news for deep learning. That's actually the reason why such a simple technique, such as gradient descent, um, can actually give us models that, while not reaching the global minimum of the loss function, still are useful in practice and deliver useful predictions. Now, um, we've already seen that local minima, they can be challenges and they are challenges for deep learning, even for we have a lot of good local minima. Another challenge is that we have to set the learning rate, the learning rate eta here. And depending on how we choose the learning rate, the progress can be very slow. If we choose the learning rate too low, then we, um, then we reach the local minimum very, very slowly because the closer we come to the local minimum, the smaller the gradient is, the smaller the step sizes we're taking. So it takes very, very long towards the end. Now choosing the learning rate too high might actually lead to divergence. We have an example here. This is actually a convex loss function, a very simple one, parabola. And what happens now if we choose a learning rate that is too high is that we are we are moving into the positive direction, which is correct, but we are overshooting the minimum. So we're becoming we're landing here at this point, and then we evaluate um, um, the uh, loss function at these parameters, which is actually higher than the loss function at the initial parameters. Now, if you compute the gradient here again, then we're overshooting into the other direction. Now, the gradient is even the magnitude of the gradient is even larger than the magnitude here because we're slightly more to the right. So we're landing here. Now, the, the gradient, the magnitude of the gradient is even larger. And so we're overshooting again to the other direction. And we're basically escaping that um, global optimum. We are diverging. This is the problem of choosing the learning rate too high. Steep cliffs, this is what we call a cliff in a loss function or energy function landscape, can also pose great challenges to optimization. As these very high derivatives that we have here can, as in the divergence case before, can actually catapult the uh, parameters w very far off. So in this particular case, um, we start here and um, we we come closer and closer to the minimum. Now we have, we are increasing the, the gradient. So we are moving even a little bit further. But what happens now is if, we, if we're landing here, then we have actually dramatically already increased the loss function. And because at this point, because we're in this cliff region, we have an extremely high gradient. We're catapulting us off like further away from where we have started. And so it's kind of the same issue that um, we have seen before with divergence. And one way um, to counteract this is a simple heuristic that people often use in practice, which is gradient clipping. In order to avoid very large gradients for particular parameters, particular elements of the parameter vector, we're just clipping them to a a priori selected range such that these extremely large um, gradients cannot adversely affect uh, the optimization, but this is a heuristic. Another issue for optimization are saddle points. Here we see a saddle point. A saddle point is a point in optimization 
in the loss landscape where the gradient is zero. Here the gradient at this red point is zero, but we are not at a, not even a local minimum because there is like the, the slope of this function is, is sloping upwards in one direction and is sloping downwards in another direction. Now in deep learning, there is compared to local minima, there's an exponentially large amount of saddle points. And the reason for this is because it's, it's much easier, like it's just probabilistically much more likely to have a subtle point. At a minimum, all, if you think about an insanely large, a very large um, dimensional space, which is the parameter space with millions of dimensions, it's very unlikely that we have a point where we, we are reaching um, a point where the slope in any of these million dimensions is in the same direction, sloping upwards. It's much more likely that some of the directions slope downwards and some of the directions slope upwards. If you think about um, each of these directions generating the slope from a random Bernoulli draw. Okay, um, so saddle points occur a lot in deep learning, but they are really just problematic if we exactly hit the saddle point, and that's very unlikely. If we're exactly hitting this point, if we are slightly off that point, then as soon as we accumulate some more gradients, we'll start moving downwards again. Another challenge are plateaus. And plateaus are also quite common in training deep models. A plateau is a region here on the top where the gradient is almost zero. And that means we have very slow progress for our optimizer, or maybe even no progress at all. Examples of this include uh, saturated sigmoid activation functions or dead ReLUs, where the gradient is effectively zero or even close to zero, uh, even equal to zero. Right? So plateaus are a problem. The optimization becomes very slow um, and they occur also frequently in deep learning. And here's another case that's difficult to optimize. This is from the Rosenbrock function, a classical function for benchmarking optimizers. And um, this function here in this particular area has a, a little valley. It's a very steep valley. So we have a small gradient along the slope of this valley. You can see this here in these ISO contours on the bottom, we have the very, very small slope in this direction. But this is the direction that we need to follow in order to optimize. Now, when we have reached that valley, following that valley is very difficult for the optimizer because it's very easy to overshoot into any of the, any of the ridges or walls of this valley um, and therefore catapult the parameter vector away from the valley. So it's it's much more easy to diverge than it is to follow the uh, valley here. 